Hey, uh, so I wanted to take a look at Meta. We last looked at them on July 22nd. I know they had earnings come out between then and now. Uh, I'm also seeing that last time we looked on July 22nd, they were trading at 294. Now it's at 305. Uh, decent sized jump. Uh, again, we'll, we'll look into their earnings, see if they were able to meet or beat expectations. Uh, then we'll go into guidance, followed by news, and then we'll wrap up with technical analysis just to see is 305 a good buying point or what is a good buying point. Uh, so as we go through this, um, you know, if you have any questions or want to add any insights, that'd be helpful and I'd be happy to read it. Uh, but going into what we expected and what they did. So uh, right off the bat, they did beat on earnings per share. Uh, they got 298. We were expecting about 291. Revenue came in at 32 billion. We were expecting close to 31 billion. Uh, going right into the income statement here, a couple things that we can point out. Number one is revenue uh, for this quarter compared to last quarter. Big jump, over $3 billion worth for the six months uh, compared to last year. It looks like the big gap between this six months and last six months was what we saw in this quarter. Uh, before it was pretty flat, but the beat of this quarter was so high that that's kind of driving the difference in the full year so far for this company. Uh, cost of revenue, uh, great margins once again, uh, just highlighting how uh, small it is compared to the revenue. You know, uh, for this quarter alone, it was like 20-ish percent overall. Yeah, like 25, somewhere in that, less than 25, close to like 20%. Uh, a big jump happened in this general administrative. They actually left a note for us at the bottom sh showing that uh, this was including accrued legal expenses of $1.87 billion, which relates to this Irish Data Protection Commission in this ongoing data transfer matter and adoption of new finding guidelines for the European Data Protection Board. We're going to mention something that has to do with Norway. I'm not sure if it has much overlap or at all, but it could be wrapped up in this. The fact that it says the Irish data protection, um, but then mentions the European data. Again, I'm not sure how much overlap, if at all, but possibly some. Uh, and again, we'll go into that once we get into the new section. Uh, and then the last thing is just income from operations. We saw a nice little jump compared to last year. And but overall, this year compared to last year, relatively flat, mainly due to this general administration uptick. Uh, but let's keep going. Here's something else that uh, it's come up with another company. I think it was, um, who was it? Microsoft, I believe. They were paying like a 20% effective tax rate, maybe like 19%. And here we are with Meta paying 16%, so very good. Uh, looking quarter over quarter that is relatively flat in terms of a number but when we look at how much income there was compared to that number they were able to bring it down and when we get to guidance they're actually projecting it to stay close to 16 as opposed to the previous almost year where it was 20 plus percent so that'll be nice it'll allow more income to flow down to the very bottom line uh, here we have just a breakdown of revenue, and this was kind of one of the uh, the highlights of this, I think, was uh, the U.S. and Canada, that going up a decent amount, nearing all-time highs again, same with just overall revenue, and then the Asia-Pacific also seeing a healthy jump in there. This actually seems like, I believe this is all-time high, so to see that continue to grow, hopefully we can see that grow into a U.S. like North America caliber type of revenue stream, but for now, seems like there's a lot of potential there, and to see it continue to grow, that's very good. Uh, here, it's broken down into family of apps revenue, and then this reality labs revenue, and we're, we'll touch on this a little bit in the news section, but this is kind of the big um, question mark for Facebook, or, or Meta, I mean. 
is that they have these uh, virtual reality type uh, goggles or glasses that you would wear. They're just putting so much money into this. Down here in the middle, we see the operating losses. Close to three to four billion dollars over the past couple quarters. And when we get to guidance, they're expecting that to actually continue to grow. And yet the revenue that they're getting back from it is so small. Like they're not even breaking even. They're losing so much on this. And yet they want to continue going into it. Um, <clears throat> the only thing I can really think of is that um, they, they just, I could see this helping like people that can't get around as much. Um, that could be a big population or just people who want to go like i can understand the vision but it's like it's just taking a very long time for it to adapt plus i i'm sure it has a decent amount to do with the price point of this type of product but you know they we just kind of have to realize that they're going to continue putting that type of money into this for the next probably two years and I don't know if it'll get any prettier. We we will hope, uh, but we just have to kind of deal with that. And what's nice about this, even though they're losing that type of money on such such an investment, they're still able to hit pretty solid operating margin numbers, gross margin numbers. So it's not overly concerning because their profitability on like the advertising segments is so great. Uh, it doesn't hurt them enough to like stay away from them. Uh, so yeah, well, uh, again, hopefully it does turn around, but um, you know, just thank goodness for the margins. That's kind of why we like this company so much. Moving on, just showing the active daily users. Uh, it continues to climb. Here it is at 3 billion active users daily. I mean, I think I don't know how much the world population is. Uh, I think it's like six billion or something. Um, is that right? Something like that. So they have a sizable population and it's still growing. I, I think again, the Asia South slash uh, South Pacific region, if they can keep building on that, this can continue growing. If this continues growing, it should just add more ad revenue for this company uh, but we'll keep track of that it's very surprising to see this continue to grow moving on to the balance sheet uh, just a couple things that rose a decent amount was cash that doubled since December we're also seeing uh, property and equipment that went up about eight billion dollars other assets went up about two billion uh, long-term debt that went up uh, close to double, like $9 billion. I'm guessing that's for the property and equipment, which that is, I believe, for like the data center and maybe AI type facilities that they're working on. Uh, accrued expenses, that also went up about $5 billion. <clears throat> I think that really was just due to timing. So not really a concern there. If this was taken like end of July, it might have been flat, you know, but just a timing thing there. Um, and then going back to like the current ratio, uh, current assets, 69 billion, current liabilities, 29, almost 30 billion. They almost have that in cash alone. So no concerns here. <clears throat> going into the outlook, which, um, okay, never mind, never mind. Uh, here's the cash flows. So shared share-based compensation that went up a decent amount uh, so they're saving money because they're paying out in the stocks uh, impairment charges for facilities they just didn't have that last year so that went up uh, so we marked it accrued expenses mentioned that on the balance sheet just a timing thing which uh, saves them money at this point because they didn't have to pay it yet overall operations 31.3 billion for the year, 17 for this quarter alone. <clears throat> Purchases of marketable debt securities, uh, that slowed down a lot. They didn't pay as much. 
maturity of sales, so they didn't sell a, much of their debt uh, securities compared to last year. Repurchase of common stock, that went down, but they're still purchasing a lot of shares back. Proceeds of the issuance, mentioned that with the balance sheet that they had, uh, they took out debt. Uh, again, I believe that's for just AI data center type, um, not chips, but just facilities. Uh, net cash from financing activities, that went down a decent amount. Uh, so they didn't, they didn't spend as much there. Again, I mainly due to the repurchases going down and also they took out that debt. Okay, now we can shift into the guidance. So they're guiding the third quarter between 32 and 34. And I think the next slide, um, yeah, originally this this top line, or no, the second line, I mean, that's what they put out before. That's what they were projecting, $31 billion. Well, Meta saying, no, we're going to put out like 32 to 34. And to go at that range, you have to imagine they're thinking the high end. Of course, we'll follow to see if that comes true. They also made a couple changes thinking their total expenses. That's going to go up just slightly between 88 and 91 from 86 and 90. Uh, here we mentioned this earlier <clears throat> that they're expecting Reality Labs operating losses to increase year over year uh, going into 2024. Uh, we expect higher infrastructure related cost next year. Uh, also expect to incur higher operating costs from running a larger infrastructure footprint. Anticipate growth in payroll expenses. We expect operating losses to increase meaningful year over year due to our ongoing product development efforts in augmented reality and virtual reality. Uh, not overall not great uh revenue went up but we're seeing little upticks in a lot of things uh overall it shouldn't impact it too much but again they're all like they're making it very clear they're going to continue putting tons of money into that reality labs um i guess i'm hoping it's not wildly more like i i'm not sure how much growth they are thinking because again it's currently averaging about four billion a quarter so if that goes to five to six um, I have I don't know uh, we'll just have to follow it hopefully the margins start to change they make more sales again we'll touch on that a little bit later uh, capital expenditures to be in the range of 27 to 30 uh, so it was 30 to 33 so they they're pulling that back that should save us a good amount considering the other expenses that are going to go up a little bit. So just kind of, they reallocated the money. Uh, they expect the total capital expenditures to grow in 2024, driven by investments across both data centers and servers, as we mentioned. And then here that they're expecting the tax rate for the rest of the year to be similar to this quarter, which was 16%. Very good. We will see, and hopefully it stays kind of in line with what they said if it does uh, hopefully we continue to see it grow um, just a little bit worried about that augmented reality piece uh, how much are they going to put into that um, preferably I would like them to just spin it off because it just hurts them so much right now but who knows a long-term vision on that one we'll we'll have to see in a couple years but for right now, it'd be nice if they spun it off. Uh, we, we touched on this earlier, how, uh, yeah, they crushed earnings. Here's 31, they were expecting, they did 32. And so they had to adjust these out. Uh, this 31, as you mentioned, they're projecting 32, possibly 34. And so on another site, it is updated. Now the average revenue they're saying is 33. So it's in the middle, roughly. They're also expecting three, $3.62 in earnings, which is a decent jump, which if the revenues play out as expected and the overall expenses stay somewhat in line, uh, that should be no problem. Uh, currently, the current year earnings per share, they're 
they're actually behind. Uh, so far this year, they came out with uh, two twenty and close to three dollars. So, you know, what's that? Five, about five and a quarter. So they're a little behind. They would need a good earnings this quarter and next quarter just to hopefully match expectations. Uh, realizing this probably changed a little bit too along the way, but they're still behind. And I know this went up slightly. I think this was about. 130 for the year. I think they bumped that up. Um, so yeah, we'll just keep following that to see if it, you know, continues to line up. Uh, now let's get into the news here. Uh, so Meta, they have these Reels revenue. I wish they broke that out, but it's just under their their app platform. But their Meta has these Reels, which is similar to TikTok and what they do. Uh, and Reels video plays on Facebook and Instagram now top 200 billion per day, up from 140 from last fall. Reels annual revenue run rate has jumped to $10 billion from around $3 billion as, la as of last fall and $1 billion as of last summer. So that's probably the reason why we saw the revenue jump as much as it has. This is working for the company. <clears throat> uh, this means... Reels is about the size of TikTok's business as of last year when it pulled in $10 billion. Now Meta saying their platforms together, they're very close to matching TikTok. Uh, and I believe it's TikTok's forecast for this year is 13.2. So we'll see as this, you know, as the year continues on, how close are they going to come? Will Meta's continue to accelerate? And potentially pass them. I could see that happening. Uh, more than three quarters of Meta's advertisers are placing ads on Reels. So same customers, they're just altering the platform a little bit, realizing, hey, this is something that people spend a lot of time on. It just makes sense. The average US user spends 53 minutes per day on TikTok versus 48 on YouTube, 33 on Instagram, and 30 on Facebook. Uh, and again, Meta owns Facebook and Instagram. So those together, a little bit ahead of TikTok, just saying. Uh, next article we have here is apparently Malaysia was looking into potentially suing Meta over harmful content. Uh, this might not happen now. They, uh, they're stating that they saw positive engagement from Facebook, but originally Meta was what they were saying for Malaysia was saying is Meta was failing to act against undesirable content relating to race, royalty, religion, defamation, impersonation, online gambling, and scam advertisements. Uh, so I guess some people would argue that that is kind of like censoring the media, but at the same time, um, the arguments they're trying to protect people Either way, Meta's kind of conforming with that, which makes sense. They're a business, they want to make money, and if all they have to do is set up a couple tweaks to the software to make a, an acceptable program for the, for the nation, uh, they'll do it. It sounds like they're complying here, and uh, no worries there, but came up. Uh, we also had Meta and this Threads app. Apparently, half the users quit already. Um, I don't know if what that really means, if, if that just means they deleted their account or if they just um, stopped using it for a day. Either way, that's how they're saying Meta lost half their users. Uh, so one of the things that they're going to do is they plan on launching an AI bot with different personas in an attempt to retain users. And so the thinking is, the example that they used is, they want to use Abraham Lincoln's voice, and because this is a Threads app, which is, um, it's just words based. I didn't take a look at it, but the way they explained it is it's strictly words, and I guess to spice things up, they wanted to use a voiceover, such as Abraham Lincoln in this case, and uh, potentially others. Not sure if that will work, but it's an idea. We'll see. Uh, Meta is also launching an AI tool, AudioCraft, to create music from text. So again, kind of interlinking here, uh, but of course in this situation it wouldn't be Abraham Lincoln, it might be Taylor Swift or someone. 
Uh, we also we touched on this a little bit earlier, how Meta has these smart glasses with Ray-Ban stories fails to impress owners. So the tech giant sold about 300,000 wearable devices through February, but the company had only about 27,000 monthly active users. Again, it just the numbers are so against these smart glasses, these virtual reality type things that Meta's pursuing, and yet they want to do it. Like, um, again, I can understand um, how it would help someone who can't get around. You can just put these glasses on uh, and kind of be there. It would be, I, I can see the vision. It's just, it's not turning into dollars. And, um, well, just we'll have to wait and see how it plays out. Uh, otherwise, at some point, I would like to try it just to see how uh, good it is. But again, for the company standpoint, it's it's a it's taken a lot of resources, not given much back. Uh, here at the bottom, we also have Meta to seek user consent for targeted ads in the EU. Meta intends to ask users in the European Union for their consent before allowing businesses to target advertising based on what they view on its services. Uh, not sure how that will work. Uh, I have to imagine it would just be like when you sign up, they're going to show you like a consent form that's very generic or something. Uh, and you'll just kind of accept it because that's what you need to do to create the account. Uh, maybe there'll be a decline option, but it sounds like they've reached an agreement. They just need to apply it now. Uh, we also have Meta starts to block news in Canada over law paying publishers. The Canadian government quickly denounced the move as irresponsible. I think Google's doing the same thing. Um, apparently they're saying this is similar to a, a law that passed in Australia in 2021. Both companies eventually struck deals with the Australian media firms after amendments to the legislation were offered. Uh, didn't mention any figures, like what it would cost financially, if anything, but it sounds like a very similar situation. Uh, so it sounds like it probably is just gonna be a temporary thing, but I, of course, any updates will kind of pass along. We kind of touched on this before with the, it was the Irish uh, data policies, but here's Norway with this they, they've implemented their own fines on Facebook over privacy breaches. Uh, they will be fined roughly $100,000 per day over the breaches starting in August 14th, and this is expected to run till November 3rd. They said Meta cannot harvest user data in Norway, such as users' physical locations, and use it to target advertising at them. I, of course, we will see how this plays out. Um, this could also widen the decision's territorial scope to the rest of Europe. This has this step hasn't been taken yet. Again, this is just Norway, but it could spread out to the other European countries. Uh, too soon to say at this point. We'll just have to find out how Meta can treat that one. But um, I'm sure they'll reach an agreement. And overall, it's not that much money, but. It could go beyond November. That's just what they have on documentation now. Um, but that is the last news article we have. So let's uh, transition into our technical analysis here. And um, again, if there's anything that you know that maybe I didn't touch on or you weren't clear on something, by all means, let me know and uh, I'll do my best to answer that question. Or uh, if you can add any insight that you think I might have skipped over, that'd be helpful to me as well. But let's go into the technical analysis here. Uh, so again, it was at it was trading at 294. Uh, so if we zoom into July 22nd here, uh, so this was where it was. Uh, we had that uptrend. Uh, it's still at the top of that uptrend. Um, we had. Let's see, we left a note for ourselves saying short-term uptrend since November and to buy the dips. This one's kind of interesting because it's kind of stepped up. It's 
it's uptrend. And so what I mean is originally it was between this green line and blue line for probably, let's see, November till February. So like three months, it was in that range. Um, then all of a sudden it took a step up into this blue to red range here. And that lasted probably from February to about April. So another three months, it was in there. Actually more like May. So like uh, four-ish, five months there. And then it took another step up. And now it's trading at the upper end of the, of the uptrend, which we have in red. So this pullback, uh, depending on what the strategy is, uh, this is a potential buy opportunity just because again, the past like two, three months now, anytime it's pulled down to that red line, it seems to continue upwards from there. Um, taking a look back, in terms of like support, there's not really much. Like we could, we, we can just draw in a couple lines just for fun, I guess. So we have a slight support here. Uh, I can make that a little bit thinner for us just so we know it's not like crucial. But somewhere in here, we could argue there's some support. It looks like it kind of bounced once, twice. You could argue that's three. It's um, here we are, it, it kind of went below. So maybe that's par for the course. If this one continues to pull back though, uh, it could pull back to like 254. I wouldn't be surprised. That, that would be a little bit below the overall uptrend that's been in effect for a while. So maybe not all the way that low at this point, but potentially, yeah. Uh, if it pulled back very uh, discernibly, over the next like two weeks. Yeah, that's within reason, next two weeks. Um, once you get beyond that, then, you know, it might shift up to like 260, 270. Uh, but yeah, we'll just keep following it. Uh, for right now though, uh, just to update it, so we're currently at 305. Uh, buy points for this, I had 254. We mentioned decent support there. I can even make this line green just so we, just so no confusion, we know that that would be a decent time to pick it up. Um, another kind of support period, not too much. Um, I think the first time I would consider picking it up would be maybe like uh, 281, somewhere in there, like 281, 283. Uh, what I'm going off of right now is the blue line, the blue uptrend line, this blue top kind of like um, resistance there was for a bit at 282. It's also the fair value point roughly like 277 uh, just to kind of keep it simple. 282 would be the point that I'd be, I'd be first interested in. You know, that would be enough pullback that it's like, number one, it would be in where it traded before, between like 254, 282. It would also be in the middle of the uptrend. It, it would kind of hit on both of those things. It's still on the upper end because ideally we would want it at 254 or uh, possibly like a 260, you know, but fair value wise, 282 would be a good starting point. I would say for this. So I'll keep the 254. I updated the other figure to 282. 282 for now is going to be the figure I'm going to watch because that would be, again, the first time I would like to add on to this. Again, it, it really just depends on how much you like it and whatnot because, again, for the past like two, three months, anytime it's pulled back to that red line, it's bounced up, continue to go forward. Um, I just don't want to pick it up right there. I think there's going to be other opportunities at better prices. So I'm going to continue to wait, see if it pulls back to roughly 280 this week. Uh, pulled back 
close to like 254 that would be ideal but kind of getting too far away from that point resistance we actually had 282 as resistance the fact is though we've passed it so as much as that's kind of resistance we're we're gonna remove it and in fact i'll just make this red for us but uh not as troubling i suppose because we're we've cleared that level um so i'm gonna remove 282 because i feel like we're we're past it we've been past it long enough that it's safe to remove we also have 312 uh 312 was uh let me see 312 that was roughly we thought we would circle back to this close to the end of the month as opposed to now and that's 312 so to update that right now and fast forwarding maybe a week or two when i hope to circle back It'd be at about 308 so i'm just going to change 312 to 308 because that is the top of the uptrend uh, and then 344 or 343 there seemed to be some resistance there again with this uptrend continuing i don't think it'll get held up there that much but that is the figure that i'm most interested in is what will it do at 343 because if it gets past there it could easily go to 380 and reach new all-time highs uh, still a lot of time between then and potentially do all-time highs based on the trend it's currently heading but just something we're going to keep in mind um, so right now resistance 343 that's the figure i'm looking at uh, we can update today's date uh, the note that we left short-term uptrend since november that is still true and to buy the dips we're still looking to buy it it's just not there uh, so for right now i'm going to keep this one red um, meaning i'm not going to pick this one up but i could understand why someone might because again past couple months when it touches that red line it does uh, pick right back up so I, i'm just not willing to risk it on this one again i feel like there's going to be better opportunities and for all we know this one might continue to pull back and then yeah i would pick it up close to 282 though that's what i'm waiting for uh, so that that pretty much wraps this up just a quick recap before we close out we have meta here uh currently is at 305 uh buy points for me are 254 and 282 282 is the point that i'm most looking at right now with resistance at 308 and 343 308 is just the top of the range uh, projecting out a couple weeks in advance uh, so that's not too worrisome i would say for this and how it's behaving right now 343 is more of a we've been here before and have been rejected so that's the point i'm more interested in uh, updated the dates earnings we'll update that to the next one soon and then that short-term uptrend since November is still in effect, so buy the dips. That's how I'm playing this. Just waiting for a, a stronger dip so that I can pick it up. But that wraps this up. So again, if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, or if you want to add any insight that I might have missed, uh, that'd be very helpful for me and probably others. Um, but yeah, otherwise, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.